I'm traveling right now and I brought a couple things with me to test out. And this has to do with screen real estate. And I got three possible options for you. Two of them you might like, the third one you might not. All right, option one is a portable display like this. Yeah, while it is one of the options, the number of portable displays out there is huge. They come in a variety of shapes, sizes, brightnesses, colors, ease of use. There are dual displays, there are single displays. This is a dual one. Displays with sound, with and without touch. You get the idea. I've actually tested a bunch of them and have a couple of favorites. I also love my iPad. After my previous review of a portable display, several people commented, why not just use an iPad? Well, there are a few reasons why I keep carrying it around a portable display, a dedicated one, instead of an iPad. Let's kick things off with the pros and cons of having a dedicated external display. Why do we get a display in the first place? More space. This is the main reason why we have a second display. Reliability is also another reason for me. Sidecar doesn't seem to work that well for me. Sometimes it works, sometimes it disconnects. The wired option for sidecar is a little bit better than the wireless one, but in general, it's not as stable for me as a dedicated monitor with a connection. Portable display displays are designed specifically for use as secondary monitors. So they offer a consistent and often more professional experience. And also, like I mentioned before, you have options. There's different sizes. This one is a dual 13 or 14 inch, I believe. I think it's a 14. There's different resolutions, which is actually really important when I, we get to the iPad part. That's a con of the iPad. There's different panel types. There's OLED, there's IPS, and many of the portable displays actually come with a mounting option, like a stand. In case of this one, a case. No pun intended. Just kidding. I always intend my puns. Otherwise, I could just edit them out. Now, it depends on how you use a portable display, whether it drains your battery like crazy or it actually powers your laptop. For example, if I'm completely disconnected in the middle of the woods or on an airplane, not that airplane seats will give you any space for a laptop and a portable monitor. But you get the idea. If I'm disconnected, the battery drain that you'll experience with portable monitors is gonna be substantial. Let's say the 16 inch MacBook Pro lasts me probably eight hours, maybe 10. It would probably last me maybe two or three with a portable monitor like this, given the rate of utilization that I've experienced. Now that's a con, so I'm skipping ahead a little bit. But the pro is that usually a lot of these portable displays have passed through power, which means yes, I have video coming out of the laptop into the monitor, but also I can plug in another cord into the monitor and feed power back into the laptop. The other pro is that these are really simple. You just plug it in and it goes. A lot of them even give you multiple options like do you want to use HDMI? Do you want to use USB-C? I haven't seen any with DisplayPort but maybe they exist. Let's get into some of the cons. There's additional cost of course and they vary widely in pricing. Some of them are $200 and they go up from there. This one happens to be I think $750 which is one of the more expensive ones. It might be on sale. I'll check and I'll link to this one down below if you want to check it out. There's of course more to carry around. There's extra weight, especially if you go for larger ones or ones that are made of metal, but also they vary in durability quite a bit. Some are plastic, which weigh a lot less than the metal ones, but the metal ones might be more durable. You also need to carry more cables with you with the external monitors. One extra cable for each of the displays, depending on whether you have a dual screen or a single screen, and potentially more charging cables to get that extra pass-through power. Now I've been testing a few of these external displays for a couple of years now. This one I've had for over a year. It's got coffee stains on it. <laughs> Now my favorite one is really light and bright. That one is only one panel. If you want a dual display and you don't mind the hefty weight, this Lemink one, it's built like a tank. It also weighs about as much as a tank. Moving on to the iPad. The iPad is an iPad. It's got multiple purposes, right? Beyond just being a secondary display. It can be a drawing tablet. It can be a reading tablet. It's a standalone computing device. It has touch screen. It's got the Apple Pencil if you want it. Now, when it comes to connecting to the MacBook, it can be connected wirelessly. You've got that flexibility how you want to arrange your workspace. And if you already own an iPad, and a lot of people that are in the Mac ecosystem might already own one, there's no need to carry any extra device. It's designed to be seamless with the Apple ecosystem. Yes, there are hacks and third-party apps that you can run to get around that and have Windows share to the iPad. I've tried a couple like Splashtop and Duet, and if you have an iPad, you can certainly give those a try, but I didn't find them to work well for me. Let's talk about some of the cons. You have to buy a case separately. That's an extra expense. And in my case, I have just an El Cheapo one. This is not an Apple one. I find 
found this on Amazon. It's actually really good. It's very cheap. It acts as a stand, a cover, it's magnetic, and it holds the Apple Pencil. I'll add a link to this down below if they're still selling it. Now let's talk about battery drain on the iPad. One of the benefits of the iPad is that it has its own battery. So it's not necessarily going to drain your MacBook's battery when it's on, especially when it's connected wirelessly. But because you're connecting to it as a second screen, you're using it wirelessly, it's going to drain the battery faster than it would under normal use. You also need to have a pretty modern iPad for this to work. Both Mac OS and iPad OS that you're using need to be up to date in order to do this kind of sharing. And they can be affected by software glitches or compatibility issues. This is something that will not affect an external display. Now, the biggest con for me is the limited customization options. You're restricted to the size and resolution of your iPad with no options to choose different display types or resolutions. This is the one thing that really got me the most. I have the smaller iPad Pro. This is the 11 inch and there are larger ones, but I found the space available on this one very limiting. Sure, it's still a second screen, so that's better than nothing, but I can get a lot more done and a lot more space on a dedicated display. Now, one really cool thing about the iPad is that you can use it in different ways with your MacBook. You can use it as an iPad and share the mouse and the keyboard of your MacBook on the iPad. You can drag and drop files back and forth, work on them on the iPad with the Apple Pencil, and then drag them back to the Mac, something you can't do with anything else. And the other way is called Sidecar, where you just share the screen. You can no longer use the iPad for its iPadiness. You only use it as an extension of the screen and very limited extension of that. Now, here's an interesting fact. If you happen to have the M3 MacBook Pro, the base model, or one of the MacBook Airs, those only support one external display, but you can use an external display and an iPad together with Sidecar and essentially give your MacBook Air two external displays. Okay, so before I give you my final recommendations, what's option three? Well, this is the one you're not gonna like too much, or maybe you will, I don't know, let me know in the comments. This is extending the screen to another non-iPad Apple device, like another MacBook or an Apple TV or any modern TV that supports AirPlay. Depending on your situation, let's say you're working in an office building, this actually might be more convenient, but there's a catch. Imagine you're in the middle of a crucial project and your external screen starts lagging. Quite the frustration, right? And that's the downside that I've experienced with this kind of setup. It will work in a pinch, but there's a significant lag that gets introduced with this setup. And it's also inconsistent connection since the signal is going over Wi-Fi. I would not use this option, but just know that it's there. So what's the verdict? Well, if you already own an iPad, leverage its versatility. It's not just a secondary display, it's another computer. You can use it in sidecar mode with universal control or standalone. Alone. But if you're strictly after an external screen or multiple screens, I would go with a portable display instead, especially if screen real estate and compatibility across various operating systems matters to you. Or you can get both for the ultimate portable setup, but then things start to get a bit heavy. If I could draw an analogy here, I'd say an iPad is like a Swiss army knife. It has a few tools in it and it's useful, but each of those tools doesn't beat a high quality dedicated knife or a high quality dedicated screwdriver. That's why I personally prefer carrying an external display with me. And if you want to see which is still my favorite one, check out this video next. And thanks for watching.